Welcome to the Touch MBA Admissions Podcast. Do you need help figuring out which schools to apply to or how to get into the world's top MBA programs? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others on this podcast and on our site, touchmba.com, as they seek the admissions edge. And now, here's your host, Darren Joe. Hey, welcome, friends, to the Touch MBA podcast. This is your host, Darren. As you all know, the MBA degree has really evolved to meet different market needs. And and one way it has evolved is there are now blended learning options that combine both online learning and in-person learning. And uh, I'd like to delve deeper into this with, with a new innovative program that has come out in Asia. And I'm joined by my good friend and former colleague, uh, Dr. Gregor Half, who is the Associate Dean for General Management Programs at SMU, where I used to work, as well as Professor Levin de Meister, who is the Academic Director of the IE SMU MBA. And so this is a joint effort from, from two top business schools, IE Business School, of course, um, a, a top-ranked school in Spain, and Singapore Management University, one of the most well-regarded business schools in Singapore and Asia. So thank you so much for your time, gentlemen, and, and welcome to the show. Good to be with you. Same here. Good to be with you. There's so many MBA programs in the market right now. So why did IE and SMU uh, want to launch this 10-month MBA program? Indeed, uh, good candidates will always have a choice between great ranking uh, MBA programs. The challenge that some candidates will have is that they have less of a choice than others. So if you have the good fortune to basically be have a great role in a great company, maybe even your family company, but you have the bad fortune to do that in a city that, say, is large, has millions of inhabitants somewhere in Asia, but no top-tier university, then you're stuck. You're forced to make a choice between, do I pursue my career, for example, in a major Indonesian or, 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 or a Chinese city, or do I go and uproot myself uh, to, to pursue uh, my, my, my academic goals? Now, that's unfair. That is unfair to a number of people, and that number of people is growing dramatically in Asia. And so that's why uh, IE and SMU together said, well, there's a market here. There's a market for people that can't uproot themselves, that do not have easy access to top-tier universities, and this is how we can combine forces uh, and, and spread greater fairness, really, uh, yeah. in, in Asia Pacific. Right. You know, I think the value proposition is if you're, for example, you're in Manila, you're having a, a great career, but you're, you want to kind of, you know, take it to the next level, um, you know, and, and you want to, you know, do a part time MBA, but have a really high quality one. And so now you have the option of having, you know, kind of the number three university in Asia uh, if in, in many of the rankings together with the top-ranked uh, IE business school, you know, I think it, it doesn't exist right now as a value proposition. So you're targeting candidates likely to be from Asia and the Southeast Asia region. Exactly. I mean, you mentioned that this is a blended part-time program, and, and I was really looking at the format, and it's very interesting. So it's a 10-month program that starts in September. There's five residential segments. Four of them are in at SMU, for about three or four days each, and one is in uh, Madrid. Yeah. Those in-person meetings are all mandatory. You have to go to those. And so I was wondering if you could just w- help walk our audience through what a typical week would be in this blended learning program, because it's not quite part-time, it's not quite full-time, it's not quite you know all online, it's not quite in-person. So it might be a little confusing for them what that would entail. Well, let me, let me start with what that entails for them while they're still at home. The, the courses that are, that are taught with support from technology basically have, have two formats. One is our lecture style courses where you actually see a professor um, on screen and he interacts with you via material that you've also uploaded or, or downloaded. Uh, and, and so that, that is very much a lecture style, but that is supported by technology. That, however, is not the main point. The main point is, and this is why this is never a mass kind of uh, online learning, uh, but it's really small group learning that is technology supported. Because the other part is, and that's a more intensive one, are four-day forums where you as a student are, are in a group with a maximum of, of around 25 other people and you are in a four-day ongoing conversation, data supported, technology supported, with your professor with clear conversational threads and interactional uh, tasks really 
and that end after four days. Right. That is incredibly intensive and really isn't about a mass access, but is, is actually small group learning uh, that, that is happening via technology. Right. Right, and so a, a typical week would kind of start with with the video conference. The video conference is ninety minutes. It's on a. It's going to be on a Saturday early evening. We use Adobe Connect as a, as a technology, so you have you know there's interactivity and, yeah. and people can chat and and ask questions and and you know the, the professor can can show all kinds of you know materials. You can even do a case study you know in a video yeah. conference. That's, it, it, there's nothing that prohibits from doing that. You know, then they go on Sunday. Uh, they will start interacting with their group members to prepare a case write-up. Uh, and then typically on Sunday night, you know, the professor will prepare a first set of questions regarding a case. Uh, and that goes on to the discussion forum. So it's really like, a, like an online forum uh, where the professor asks questions. You, you have, as a participant, you have a limited number of posts that you can uh, post during that four-day forum. It starts on Monday and it ends on Thursday. And so the professor will take the class through the various issues in the case and, and the various learning points by, by asking questions and responding to their replies. People can respond to each other, you know. And, and so it's, 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 very, it's very intensive. And one of the advantages of that format is that, you know, people who usually may not speak out in class or, or don't feel like they have a lot of time to, to delve deeply, they have the chance to do that. And the, the experience that IE has is that you get very rich case discussions and, and every participant has a chance to have their say and, and bring out the points that they think are important. And, and, and the professor then kind of reacts to that and, and brings it all together in the end in, in, in a summary of the case. It's intensive for the students. It's also intensive for the professor. And, but it also allows professors to really get to know the students uh, and, and vice versa. Yeah, and, and, and that's exactly the point I wanted to ask you because SMU prides itself as being a university where there's small class sizes, there's lots of interaction between students and professors. And so do you think as, as you're both professors, I should mention, are professors of uh, operations management, uh, Levin is and, and Gregory is professors of, of corporate communication. Do you feel like you'll lose a lot of that learning experience in the online forum setting versus that intense face-to-face -face interaction that, that most MBAs have? Not at all. Quite on the contrary. We would have lost it if in a MOOCs kind of setup. But, but clearly this isn't a MOOCs. Uh, maybe it's not even online learning. But, but what it really is, is it, it's small group learning that is technology supported, yes. where we have the opportunity to collate those small groups from, from, from many parts of the world. So it's actually, and obviously we thought hard about this and we needed to make sure that it fits the, the SMU philosophy. And we realized that this actually expands what we're doing into a larger number of people. And we're, we're keeping the high level of interaction. We're keeping the small group learning. And we think that is at least as enjoyable as the, as the small group learning that, that we have at SMU live. All right. So it's, it's a way to kind of really take that small group learning and make it kind of regional for people who, who, want to, who are not able to take out you know, a year out of their careers. When I first learned about this approach, it, it reminded me a bit of the, you know, some research that Arnold de Meyer, our president, did a while ago in, in, in R&D, where, you know, he was looking at the optimum amount of face-to-face -face interactions that are needed in order to make online interactions effective. And so you do need some face-to-face -face, uh, interactions in order to, to make, a, you know, an online interaction effective. But I think we have the right amount. We will start with a week in Singapore. I think they'll get to know each other. Then they go online and then, you know, after eight weeks, they come back to each other for three days. So I think it, we actually have a, a very good mix supported by research done by our president a while ago. And it sounds like a very intense program. There's three periods. Each period, there's about six classes plus extracurricular stuff as well. So how many hours do you expect students to to have to prepare and, and study for each week. So, so I mean, at IE, what they tell people to expect is to, to, to put in about between 25 and 30 hours a week. Uh, Dara, maybe, maybe just as a comparison for, for, your, for your audience, that amount of time is roughly equivalent to the amount of time that an EMBA student puts in a week. Uh, so, so that gives you an indication of the intensity and the quality of, of, of a program like this. Absolutely. And, you know, I noticed that the, this joint degree offered by IE and SMU does have a higher tuition cost than SMU's MBA program. So the tuition right now is about 75000 Singapore dollars um, versus about 60000 for the SMU MBA. So I was wondering what benefits 
would your students get from from this program that you know maybe they say oh maybe I can get it for cheaper through the the normal SMU MBA? Well, first of all, of course, they get they get the benefit of two universities uh, and and everything that that comes with that. Not just the fact that IE is one of the best business schools in the world, but they clearly have an additional set of teachers, they have an additional set of experience, they have an additional network into very much the Western Hemisphere. So there, there are many fit benefits of having a, a joint degree. The, the other thing I would say is the intensity of the discussion forums uh, for you know for students, higher. but also for, for faculty members, yeah. is something that, that does require more resources. There's a level of faculty interaction that I think you will get in this program that is actually quite, quite unique. The other thing I would say is, you know, we, we've made the conscious choice to invest in, in project-based learning, and it's two course units out of a, a total of 12, so it's, it's, a, it's a, a large part of the program. That is also something that will come with, with intense faculty guidance. So, so you have a team of three to four students that will have a faculty guiding their project who, who, who's actually being, uh, you know, for that faculty member, it is equivalent to half a course unit just to work with that one team. So again, it, it's very resource intensive. But we strongly believe that that component is going to add additional value to the program. Yeah, and, and that's a really interesting point that it's actually an online, well, a program with an online component. Many candidates would think, oh, well, they're just trying to scale, you know, the, their offering up. But what you both are telling me is that the faculty will be perhaps even more involved with this group. And, and how many students are you expecting in this first cohort, you never know. I know it's the first first time, but uh, what what are you shooting for? What what IE tells us is that you know, kind of a maximum amount of students in in a in a discussion forum and a video conference that works well is about thirty maximum, maybe thirty two students. So so we will definitely not go uh, beyond that. And 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 to be clear, um, as you said, this is a joint degree between SMU and IE. So if I attended your program. Would I be able to tap into SMU's network as well as IE's alumni network? Yes, that, that, that's exactly what you would be able to do. Um, and and this, is, this is true both for the students as well as for the alumni, as well as for the career services and, and support, support staffs. Okay, yeah. So on, on, maybe we could talk about career services while, while you bring that up. The total face-to-face -face time a student would have with SMU would be about two weeks or so, right? And maybe half a week at IE. So how can they, one, access these career resources? And if they are planning to change careers, you know, that's such a big part of MBA programs. Um, how do you expect that interaction to work? There's a, there's a number of things that, that we needed to plan so as to make this happen. And, and, I'm, and I'm glad you're asking this. One thing is that all of the elements of a program that are about personal development, career development, professional growth, those are typically the ones that we put into the face-to-face -face sessions. So our classes on career development, our classes on negotiation, our classes on, 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 on personal communication, those career skills really are the ones that, that we teach on campus. And that means that the instructors and the career service team then gets uh, gets the that initial contact and and that can then you know intensify that contact and in a, in a, in a person to person way. The other thing that is important to know here is that particularly IE has a, a broad network of career service affiliates, yeah. meaning that they have, and, and you know this, Darren, that they, they have a number of offices all around the world and are really very smartly and broadly spread out and can tap into, into, into multiple markets across the world. Just a few last questions on the curriculum. I noticed that there are some advanced topics as well, and those seem to be very Asia-focused. Do your students, will they be able to choose what they can study for those advanced topics, or is it more of a set curriculum. So that, that's a set curriculum and, it, and it's really kind of you know an opportunity for us to, to leverage the advanced knowledge that SMU has developed over the, the years around topics of management in Asia. Now you know if, if you look at the description of the courses you'll see that it's really about you know seeing how Asian companies, uh, multinationals in Asia have taken some of the perhaps traditional ways of doing things in, in innovation and marketing have tried to apply them here and actually have, have learned new things about how to do innovation, how to do marketing, perhaps related to the context, but perhaps related to just kind of real innovation also in, in management techniques. So, so we wanted to make sure that the students in this program have access to these advanced knowledge about management here in Asia. 
And also, my, my last question on the academic side is, I saw there's a final exam. <laughs> so what, what does that entail? There is a final exam that is scheduled in Madrid. And, and, and really what it is, it's the final presentations of the project work. Each one of the courses will, of course, also have kind of a final component, which could be an exam or, or a, a report that will be individual based. You both have really helped me flesh out my understanding of the program and, and how personal it will be. And, and that's really exciting. And so maybe we can shift gears a bit and talk about your admissions process. I guess my first question is, because this is a very unique format, are you looking for a different sort of candidate than you know the typical sort of traditional MBA candidate? Because, I mean, these people are going to be very busy. <laughs> Well, in some ways, we're looking for exactly the same kind of kind of mm. meaning. People that are able to reflect upon where they are in their life, are able to set goals, and are able to 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 determine what they need to to get on in life. And the second thing that they'll have in common with other MBA students is simply that they're intellectually able to to cope with us. Mm. So, so, so do, those two things will will be similar. We think what we will, however, see differently is that these people are in a different stage in their life or live in different parts of the world where they'll need to balance some other things. So, so a typical candidate would be somebody that, for example, is second in command in her or his family business uh, and is therefore not able to, to basically extract herself right. and, and go away uh, to do her MBA for, for, for a year or, or two. I think we'll see much more of, 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 of that group of candidates uh, in, in this MBA than, than in our on-campus MBA. And I mean, the other thing that, you know, I'll be looking for is, you know, people who, who can kind of combine that conceptual learning that we'll have together with the operational learning that we'll have in the project. So we want to have people yeah. who, can, who can both think and, and act. And, and so we're yeah. going to look for that in, in, the, in the CVs. So w w when you say think and act, you mean maybe perhaps a more m mature candidate? Uh, well, so we need about, you know, a minimum of three years of experience, but we do expect that most candidates will, will probably have around five to six, uh, perhaps even more, yep. more experience. Great. And, and so in terms of the application process itself, could you walk me through or our audience through like what the process is from when they press submit on that application to when they get a decision? Uh, well, so, you know, once they have the, the application complete, and I think that's, that's where they probably need to focus a good amount of time, then, you know, we will, like we do in our other MBA programs, uh, but of course we do this kind of together with IE, uh, look at the applications, decide whether it's a strong enough application to have an interview. If we have the opportunity to do face-to-face -face interviews, you know, we will take those opportunities, Mo but most interviews I expect will be uh, Skype interviews, uh, two, two interviews. Yeah. We expect to be able to, to, to do the interviews within a, within a two-week period after the decision has been made, uh, and then perhaps another two weeks. We'll probably do it faster, but uh, two weeks for, for the interviews, two weeks for the decision uh, on admission. Darren, what this means then uh, is that we have a rolling admissions process. So there's, there, there are no fixed cutoff dates uh, for, for applicants, but it's, it's basically rolling. And those interviews will be done by yourself, by a faculty member? Uh, I mean, we, we have, you know, our, our regular group of people that, that do interviews. It includes faculty members uh, and on the IE side as well. They have, uh, they actually have, you know, faculty members, uh, but also they have a kind of a dedicated admissions group uh, who are, you know, who, who's, whose sole job it is actually, you know, to be able to assess candidates from interviews. So, uh, you know, you might see a mix of people doing the interviews. And you might even see an MBA alumnus or alumna uh, co-interviewing you. And then in terms of the, the test that applicants need to take, I, I saw you accept the GMAT and you're targeting an average about 650 to 680, somewhere there. Of course, if you can score better than that, that's, that's even better. But could you talk to me a little bit more about what the SMU and the IE admissions tests uh, require, just in case someone you know, doesn't want to take the GMAT? The SMU admissions test really is, is a different version of measuring the same thing as, as GMAT. It measures, you know, integrated reasoning, quantitative understanding, uh, verbal reasoning. So it, it really does the same. It measures the same things. Right. You know, you can choose the IE admission test as well. IE has offices around Asia, and we have yeah. uh, we have our own office here. So if you want to take one of those tests, you know, you need to make it to, to one of our offices. 
the, the IE admissions test is it's a 90 minute test, you know, focus on verbal, numerical, uh, logical capabilities, yeah. you know, from, from a manager's point of view. There are lots of people rolling their eyes over GMAT or GMAC, but what we've realized is, and this is why we're keeping it, is that GMAT does test things that typically you require to get through a high quality MBA program. It is not always precise, uh, you know, there are sometimes surprises, but generally it does test something that is that, that, will, that will help you in a great way of succeeding in a demanding program like this. Okay, and so I will link to an email in the show notes where perhaps interested uh, candidates can get in touch with you to, to find out where those tests are. And then in terms of financing, could we talk a bit about the scholarships that will be available? What percentage of candidates do you think might get a scholarship? And, and how big those awards would be. Before any candidate thinks of applying for a scholarship, I would ask them to assess themselves, are they outstanding in, in one of three things, either in their leadership experience or in the diversity that they can bring into the classroom, or thirdly, in plain, raw, intellectual and academic capability. So, so, so those, those are the three things, and, and ideally, you know, a candidate combines, combines those three. Those are the three things that we would be looking out for before we award a scholarship. Um, scholarships can go up to, and this is true for, for all of the general management programs at SMU, um, except the EMBA, uh, can go up to 30% indeed. Uh, and, and we do think that goes a long way to basically support, support a candidate. Right. And, and we're really, you know, we're, we're looking for excellent people, outstanding yep. people. And so this is a way for us to... Uh, you know, encourage uh, those those outstanding candidates to you know to apply and and to and to join us. Yeah, so I I think that's all very clear, and uh, I appreciate those tips, Gregor. So, you know, people applying know what to emphasize and what to get across if they're looking for funding. But maybe we could close the program on just kind of, you know, what is your big vision for for this this program? What do you want it to be in five years, five ten years? You know, what do you want are the graduates of this program to, to really be like and, and, and get? Right. I mean, you know, to me, it's, it's about raising the, the, the bar in terms of management talent and management development, you know, here in the region. There are not many programs that, that, are, that really deserve the term global. Uh, there are not many programs that really tap into a global network. And I think it can only be done with two leading business schools from completely different parts of the world. And, and so if, if in 10 years we have among the leaders uh, of the East and West, i.e. SMU graduates, that would make us very proud uh, because those, those would be true globalists. Great. Thank you very much for your time, Professor Gregor and Professor Levin. It was a pleasure to, to chat with you guys. And maybe we can have you back on the show in a year to, to hear how things have, have gone and progressed. I'm very much looking forward so, to that. Sounds good. listening to the touch mba podcast don't be shy we have a mailing list go to touchmba.com and get yourself signed up and we'll keep you posted with the best tips and insider interviews on how to get into your number one school you can also find us on twitter and facebook at touch mba see you soon